DC practical number one demonstration. So this is the basic electrical circuit and it's Dr. Ken here. So you've seen the basic circuit before if you've done some of my theory slides. Um, the basic circuit for this particular demonstration is very simple, very straightforward. We're simply going to use a battery, actually a series of batteries for the practice. We're going to use a switch to uh, control the current on and off, and we're going to use a lamp to indicate the amount of current flowing. We're also going to do some measuring around the circuit as we go. So that's the basic circuit. Power supply is a battery, the load is a lamp, and we're controlling using a simple switch. So here's the simple circuit laid out on my uh, little training aid. So I'll just explain uh, this to you. We have uh, batteries and we have three of them at the moment. I'm only using one, but eventually we will use all three. So we've got three batteries, uh, each at 1.5 volts. So eventually we'll be able to have about four and a half volts total. Uh, we have our little incandescent lamp in the circuit and you can see him just there. I've just drawn the element in the circuit. And of course we have a switch down here so we can control the flow. I'll just change my pen color. And you can see I'm coming out of the positive of my battery using this wire and bringing it around and bringing it to what we call the common of the switch. Then we're coming out of the switch with a wire and connecting to one side of our incandescent lamp. And then finally out of the lamp and round to the negative or the zero volts of the battery. So nice simple circuit. So our battery is our supply, our lamp is our load, and our switch is our control. So the next thing we need to do is we uh, need to uh, measure the voltage. And we're going to use do that using our voltmeter. Now our voltmeters are always connected in parallel, which is what I've done here. So parallel and you can see here I've just simply connected it straight across in the circuit that's the one big advantage of voltmeters they're easy to put into a circuit because you're just connecting them straight into parallel and normally don't have to break into the circuit at all you just connect them in and away they go so what does that look like in reality so here's my voltmeter connected in and you can see on my voltmeter here it's connected to volts DC the solid bar on the meter indicating that's DC so that's DC volts is what that means if you look carefully uh, at the leads of my multimeter, I've got the black one connecting around through here and into the zero volts or the common on my meter. And on the opposite side of the lamp, you can see my red one connected to the lamp, the alligator clip it's called, and connected through here and eventually ends up here on the positive input side of my multimeter. So that's voltage measurement, always in parallel. And in this particular case, I'm across the lamp. In this simple circuit, I'm also across the supply, but uh, it's important to understand that I wanted to measure the voltage drop in this particular case across
across the lamp itself. So next we're going to uh, measure the current and this time we're going to add in an ammeter but this time we have to actually break into the circuit. So I've connected the ammeter between the battery supply and the switch. It doesn't matter where the ammeter goes in a simple current circuit. You could, I could have broken in here and it would work. I could have broken in here and it would work. It doesn't matter. But I've chosen to break into the circuit between the battery and the switch. So what does that look like on our physical circuit? So you can see here now that I've actually removed the piece of wire. There was a piece of wire that went from the positive of the battery around to the switch. I've now taken out that piece of wire and replaced it with my ammeter. So here's my second multimeter set up as an ammeter. And again, this is on, you can probably just read it, it's just DCA, DC current. So the positive side, if you trace through the wire, the red one, ends up going into my 20 amp socket. So I'm gonna start at the highest possible range. And then I come back out of my meter on the common. There's my common. This time it's the black lead. And if we follow the black lead, I now come to the switch. So in effect, I've now put the ammeter in series in the circuit to measure the current. So it's between the battery and the switch connected in series. We're going to do a couple of measurements now. Actually, we're going to do three measurements in the next few slides. So we're going to do our first measurement at uh, 1.5 volts, our second measurement at three volts. The way we achieve that is simply by putting two of the D cells in series, and then our fourth, sorry, one, two, that should have been a three. Little typo there, won't matter. Our third one is 4.5 volts, which is three cells in series. So here we are, we've turned our circuit on and you can see the, the lamp has uh, turned on and is glowing. We're pulling 1.455 volts and about 0.021 amps or 21 milliamps. So in this particular case, the circuit is on. The lamp is reasonably dull compared to what it's capable of. And I've just noted what our voltage and our current is doing on the side there. So by turning the circuit on with one battery, we're going to get this dull glowing lamp with the appropriate voltages and the appropriate currents being measured. Now you can see here the lamp has increased in intensity quite considerably and again that's because I have now added in the second battery so you can see this lead here has effectively put this battery here at 1.5 volts in series with this battery. So I've now got a total of about three volts as my supply. But the reality is the voltage across the lamp is at 2.761 volts. It's reasonably close to three. And my current has gone up to 0.29 or 29 milliamps. 
And you can see between the two slides a significant increase in brightness of our lamp. It's a two and a half volt lamp, so it is now operating well and truly at its design full voltage. So current 29 milliamps, voltage 2.671 volts, giving us a reasonably bright lamp. Now we've stepped things right up and we've introduced all the batteries now. So we effectively have all our batteries in the circuit. And you can see the three batteries now connected. Here's the links of wire that are now connecting the three batteries in series. So I've got about 4.5 volts here from my batteries. You can see my lamp is gone very bright. The voltage is 4.37 volts and the current has increased dramatically again to 37 milliamps or 0.037 amps. So our circuit continues to be on obviously. The lamp is very very bright. Our voltage has gone up and our current has gone up. So here's a summary. I've simply put up a table which uh, gives us our voltage settings. So this is the actual batteries. So this is the actual supply. Our batteries are here. And we have our 1.5, 3 and 4.5. They're the three voltages we operated at. We actually measured the voltages across the load at uh, 1.45, 2.76 and 4.37. None of them exactly spot on, but all very close. And then we had our currents. So we started at about 21 milliamps and our light was dull. We increased to 29 milliamps and it got quite bright. And then we increased to 37 milliamps and we got very bright. So I've asked a couple of summarizing questions. Why do the voltage differences between the set and the actual? So here's our set and here's our actual. And why is there some difference here? Well, there's a couple of possibilities. Um, one could be the age of the batteries. So age of the batteries could be an issue. They might have been older batteries and have gone a little bit flat and not putting out their full 1.5 volts each, even though they're brand new ones. I bought at the supermarket yesterday, guaranteed for about 20 years shelf life. So that's probably not the answer. Two. Most likely one is measuring. Measuring inaccuracies. So measuring inaccuracies. Uh, I haven't had my multimeters um, recalibrated and tested in a lot of years. So probably my meters are out. So the meters I, were use, I was using So the meters need calibrating. So they need some cal is probably what's going on. The next question is what is the relationship between voltage, current and lamp brightness? Well, the relationship's reasonably obvious. As we increased the voltage, so as the voltage went up, 
you would have noticed the current also went up and the brightness went up. So there's a direct relationship. If as long as the resistance in the circuit remains constant, so as long as R is constant, the resistance is constant, if we increase the voltage, the current will go up in proportion, and in our case, the lap brightness of the lamp will increase. And of course, if I keep increasing the voltage and therefore the current, eventually the light will get so bright that it will actually melt the element and fail. So let's do some quick observations on our prac. The lamp filament indicated that the electric current was flowing when the switch was open or closed. And uh, so I hope you went for closed. So the filament indicated the electric current was flowing when the switch was closed. When the supply voltage was at a setting of number one or at 1.5 volts, what was the lamp's appearance? Was it dark? So was it off? Was it dull? Was it bright? So at 1.5 volts, if you remember, it wasn't off, but it was dull. And again, based on your observations, increasing the circuit voltage causes current to do what? If we increase the current, if we make the current increase, go up, what's going to happen to the voltage? So what's going to happen? So what's going to happen? So if we increase the voltage, what's going to happen to the current? The current is going to increase. Increase. It's not going to go down and it's not going to stay the same. The next is the ammeter is used to measure what? So what does an ammeter measure? Of course, the hint is in the name. It's an ammeter. It's a meter that measures amps, and amps is a unit of current. Therefore, an ammeter measures current. It does not measure resistance. It does not measure voltage. And finally, our final observation, what is always connected in series. An ammeter, sorry, is always connected in what? Is it connected in series? Is it connected in parallel? Or is it unimportant? Well, ammeters are always, always a tricky one for students. They seem to get this one back to front all the time. Ammeters are always connected in series. And unfortunately, you've got to find a way to break into the circuit. Where a voltmeter, you don't have to worry. But with an ammeter, you need to break into the circuit to be able to put the meter in to measure the circuit current. So that's the end. I hope you've enjoyed uh, practical demonstration number one in DC with Dr. Ken.